Greetings party peeps and welcome to my Sega Mega CD2 showcase. Now, bit of a disclaimer, this isn't going to be a history of the Sega Mega CD. There are plenty of other YouTubers out there that do a much better job. I hardly recommend Adam Korolek and Sega Lord X if you'd like a brief history or an extended history of one of Sega's most doomed consoles. But um, And if you want to know how to, you can run it you know, in these modern times on modern TVs and whatnot. I heartily recommend checking out My Life in Gaming. I'll put all the links in the comment below. But right now, this is just a showcase of the Mega CD2 that I had as a child. In fact, this is the same console that I had as a kid. It's still in great working condition, and all the games still work for it. Bit of backstory behind it. My cousin, who used to work at Big W at Southland, called my folks and said, Hey, there are these very cheap... Mega CDs going for just $88 with four games because when I picked it up in late 1996 this was already a Doom console so I picked up the scraps and the four games that I got with it I actually don't have them in their original packaging because I don't know back then you didn't really put stuff in CD cases you would always take them out but yeah so I made this little spiffy thing here uh, the original four games I picked up on Mega CD back in the day were Road Avenger, Batman Returns, Mortal Kombat and Yumami Mystery Mansion. I'll give you my thoughts on that in just a moment. Then after that, in 1998, it was a hell of a trip. The holy grail to pick up Sonic CD, which is probably the best game, I reckon, on the Mega CD, but I'll talk about that. My mum actually found that in a cash converters back in 1998. She was on an epic journey about it, and I pretty much remember in 1997, my good buddy Jason D'Souza and I just talking about it. like he'd be looking through stores, I'd be looking through stores because it wasn't as simple as going on eBay. And last but not least, the final game that I had on my Mega CD was WWF Rage in the Cage. Me being a wrestling fan and a Sega fan, just seemed like a match made in heaven. But yeah, I picked this one up at Video Games Heaven, which is a store that no longer exists anymore because I'm an old man. But enough about that, let's get straight into the showcase. This was the pack-in game that came with the Mega CD, and I don't exactly have the most memorable experience with the game. While I could blame the rate that I'm crashing into things on input lag with my capture card, truth is, this is an accurate representation of what me playing Road Avenger back in the day looked like. There was an odd moment where my reflexes would be on point, but the majority of the time, it was just a fiery demise on my part and staring at the continue screen. Now, whilst I might be rubbish at Road Avenger, the game does get some props from the gaming community, so one day, maybe I can get the skills to actually clock it. Or at the very least, I'll watch a long play of it on YouTube. Now, this game got a fair run from me as a kid. Uh, the game is split up into two sections, and it was one of the games that showed off the power of the Mega CD. The soundtrack is awesome, and the driving parts are pretty cool as well. The platforming segments I could never quite get my head around, and it was normally what led me to turning off the game and moving on to something else. One of the benefits of lockdown in the past couple of years was that I could actually go back and play the game and appreciate it, but I still do suck at the platform sections. Out of the four games that came with my Mega CD, this was by far my least favourite. I didn't get the internet until 1999, and by then, my level of caring for this game was so little that I wasn't going to search Yahoo or Alta Vista for a walkthrough. Frustrating doesn't even come to my feelings on this game. My experience of it was literally aimlessly walking through this damn mansion like I was trying to find the toilets at a wedding reception where I didn't know anyone at. However, to be fair, I thought I'd give the game another crack, so maybe a long overdue trip to GameFAQ and getting my hands on a mystery mansion walkthrough is in order. I have got nothing but good things to say about the Mega CD version of Mortal Kombat. To this day, I'm a huge MK fan, and back in the day, I even got a copy of it on my Master System, which was so scaled back that it didn't even have Kano in it. Back to Mortal Kombat though, this is the definitive edition of Mortal Kombat on a 16-bit console. It's got the music from the arcade version in CD quality, it's got blood on by default with no need to put in a code like the Mega Drive port, and it's even got a badass video intro when you boot up the game. It also fixes one of my biggest hates of the Mega Drive version, which was Scorpion and Sub-Zero sharing sprites. Thankfully, this version has both ninjas with their respective sprites. The game does love to tick the right boxes, but there's one thing that lets it down big time. Loading times! It is something that can't be helped, but man oh man, it is an annoyance. Aside from that, this is a solid port of Mortal Kombat and got a hell of a playthrough for me back in the day. 
Where do we begin with Sonic CD? Now, this was the holy grail of Mega CD games for me because as a kid, I remember going to Kmart in Parkmore and thinking this game looked so badass. I mean, look at the cover. I was so desperate to play this game, I was tempted to get the ancient PC version back in the day, but I didn't have a Pentium processor. Now this, by far, is the game that got the most gameplay out of me as a kid. I played the life out of it and was blown away by how different it was to the Mega Drive series, and most of all, I love the story of the game and the introduction of Metal Sonic. This game can do no wrong in my book, and as you can see, Nims as a kid spent a lot of time playing this game, and what I loved was the replayability of it with Time Attack Mode. You could play any level you wanted at your leisure, and you could even go back and play the special stages without any restraints. Obviously, Nims in 1998 was a lot better at the special stages than Nims in 2022. Now, the only downside is you couldn't play the past versions of the zones in Time Attack as they were only playable in the actual story mode. But Sonic CD also had some cool extras to unlock, like the DA Garden, where you could listen to all the tracks from the game with a cool visualization, and a visual mode where you could watch all the FMV from the game at your leisure. When it comes to my favorite Mega CD games, this one wins by a country mile. Now, being a wrestling fan, you know I had to get this, and I picked this up from Video Games Heaven back in the 2000s. Sadly, this video game chain no longer exists, but uh, it's a shame because it was awesome, but that has nothing to do with the game. If you played WWF Royal Rumble or WWF Raw on Mega Drive or Super Nintendo, this was pretty much the same gameplay, but had full motion video, which was the style at the time. It's got a hell of a roster with some pretty big names like Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, even your fringe guys like the Nasty Boys, Crush, and Bam Bam Bigelow. But the only thing, it's got the worst user interface when it comes to selecting your characters. It's not even in alphabetical order, and I've got to speed up the footage so you can actually see who's on offer. One cool little thing is that you can see your wrestler's finisher with a little clip. Now I know in 2022, this looks like a crappy animated GIF, but come on man, it was a big deal in 1994. Despite being on a CD, there's still crappy MIDI-esque sounding themes with the wrestlers, which is a real shame, and a bit of a letdown when you get stuff like this. Much like Mortal Kombat, this also gets a brief halt to proceedings when you're confronted by loading, but it does make up for it a little bit when you get an intro from Howard Finkel and a little promo WWF attitude style from your wrestler before the match. Now with a wrestling game called Rage in the Cage, you better be hoping there was a cage match, but luckily there was. All in all, the roster on this game and the gameplay being the same as almost every other acclaimed wrestling game released in the 16-bit era, plus the addition of those little clips and sound bites, I guess make this a bit of fun, and probably the definitive version of a North American wrestling game for that era. Just those damn load times, that's the only annoying thing about it. So in addition to my childhood Mega CD, in 2004, when I joined eBay, one of the first things I did was buy an American Model 1 Sega CD. Sadly, it's not in working condition and never has been. But more importantly, it came with a bunch of games which are stored away at my parents' house. In fact, let's have a look-see at them. All right, as promised, I'm in the garage at mum and dad's house and I've gone and dug through the old crap and found the Sega CD games that I own. Jeez, NBA Jam. Echo the Dolphin! And this little Tufa little thing. So this one had, this was like a bunch of Mega Drive games stuck onto a Sega CD CD. And a double shot came with Sherlock Holmes as well. So, plethora of uh, selection as you can see. When I got my hands on the Mega CD, it was already out of fashion, but at the time it gave me a couple of cool things. This was my first ever CD player. I remember playing the single to Will Smith's Men in Black in it countless times. Plus, the hunt to find Sonic CD was legendary for me and really adds to my love for the bargain console I got back in the day. And despite being able to get my hands on other games in this time, in this current present day, I still go back to the original six games that I had from back in the day and play them over and over. But if you've made it this far, thank you for watching the Nims Mega CD Showcase, and I'll catch you in my next video.